So the next question is from uh, Backfield, who's a regular on our forum, and we love the regulars. Um, pretty much, this is a great question. It's something I'm thinking about, and it's something I'm a little bit cautious of now, because I'm all in on simple login and Proton Pass. Lock in risk. Uh, if something happens, uh, what if you get downgraded, now you're stuck with a subscription. If you create hundreds of email alias aliases, but decide to downgrade to a free plan, now you have to change those aliases to something else. And it's the same issue um, if you're using any other aliasing service, you know, if you disable the service and you have to go in and change everything manually. So what to do about this? I don't really know. I'm actually really curious for Jonah's thoughts on it because on my end, I don't have any reason to think that Proton is going to do something that's going to make me like stop using the email aliases. But that's right now and things can change and there is this big trust that I'm putting in this company and that they really screw up and it can be really bad. What I keep going back to in my head is I have a password manager, I have a list of all of my accounts, I can always just go in and change them and it would be a pain in the ass and I don't want to do it, I don't even want to think about it, but it's, it's a problem. So one way around this possibly, and I don't know if this would work, so question for Jonah. If you have a custom domain and you're using a custom domain with these aliasing services, my guess is then you have a little bit more control over your aliases and you might not even need to like move anything over. Like you could remove it from the service and then set up a catch-all and then you can still receive all the emails to your domain. So I think if you're someone who's really concerned about this, get a domain, use your domain for everything, but then you don't have as much privacy protection because it's all tied to the same domain for all your aliases. So you might have different aliases, but it's all going to be part of the same domain. But I'd say you still get, you know, you still get spam protection in general, like because you can still disable the alias. Um, you still separate things per account. It's not going to use the same email. But yeah, it's not going to be as well thought out. Like, let's say um, I host a service and someone has a domain that's at bob.com. If they say, let's say my service is called melon, melon.com. If they have their email melon at bob.com, and that's the aliasing technique that they use for my service, then I can probably guess what their email is going to be for Netflix. No? So those are kind of my thoughts. But I think if you're someone really concerned about this, I'd be exploring a custom domain if you really want ownership over your aliases, because it is something I'm a little bit concerned about myself too. But I'd be really curious for Jonas takes here. Yeah, I'm back now. I think I got the last half of that question. Um... I, I agree that the, the custom domain is main is the main way to like protect yourself against lock-in. Um, there's the catch-all link you said. There's also um, at least simple login lets you export a list of all your aliases so you can import it into another service if you use a custom domain. But with the simple, uh, simple login hosted domains, it is an issue. And you just kind of have to pick one and commit to it at the end of the day. And I think that simple login is going to be around for, for in the long run pretty much forever because uh, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't so i don't think it's a huge risk but for me i use simple login aliases for like unimportant accounts um because there is like a privacy risk of using the same custom domain with all these websites but for for everything else i i, I do use a custom domain with simple login and i just generate uh generate a custom alias for each service so i can like control the incoming email prevent spam that kind of thing but i but I do use a custom domain to avoid this issue because it, is it is a problem. Yeah, it's something good to think about. It's good that you're asking that question. Thanks for watching this TechLark clip. This is actually a clipped version of a full-length video that talks about this topic a lot more thoroughly. So if you want to check out a lot more digital rights content, check out the main TechLark channel, and we'll see you over there.